In this webinar, we are going to analyze some relevant managerial issues in the planning and setting up uh, new research infrastructure. To analyze this topic, we are here today with Professor Eero Vuorio from Turku University in Finland and uh, former director of BioCenter Finland, a nationwide life uh, science uh, distributor research infrastructure, and also former part-time executive director of BBM Rai Eric. Eero um, was uh, also involved in the preparatory phases of uh, BBM Rai Eric. So, Eero, thank you for being here and sharing your knowledge uh, on this topic. Um, to give some context to our conversation, could you briefly take me through your career and what about your current position? Well, I, as you said, I come from the University of Turku, where I got both my MD and my PhD, and more or less then had a kind of a regular uh, research career. I did my postdoc at the University of Chicago, worked at ETH Zürich, and then in MD Anderson, Houston, Texas but mainly back home in, in Turku. Little by little, I became involved with um, research administration. I became the chair of the Medical Research Council of the Academy of Finland, which brought me to represent Finland in uh, EMBL, the European Molecular Biology Laboratory Council. And they elected me actually twice to chair the council for a full seven years. This. Um, also then led to my involvement with the ESFRI process that we will be discussing today a lot. And um, with this experience in 2008, my good friend Lena Pelton and Balotia invited me to come and help her and become the part-time executive manager of BBMRI during the preparatory phase. It was supposed to be a part-time job, but it certainly was much more than part-time. Uh, but in the end, um, we have a BBMRI Eric up and running, and so uh, this actually gave a lot of first-hand experience. Most recently, as you mentioned, I became then uh, the director of uh, Biocenter Finland, which really covers all research infrastructures at national level in Finland, uh, and a few other things. So I have been looking at infrastructures from many different perspectives, and. Uh, that's probably why I'm here. So very interesting, Eero. So uh, could you tell us more about your experience as a former director of Biberon Eric? Uh, you know, you are a scientist, so in, the, in that uh, duty you was involved in managerial tasks. First of all, BBMRI, which stands for Biobanking and Biomolecular Resources Research Infrastructure, is a large, a very large European project aiming at building BBMRI um, ERIC, which would be then the functional uh, activity. Um, obviously, indeed, it requires managerial skills, and I have no managerial training whatsoever. So this is all common sense that I will be dividing with you or discussing with you. But it did help me a lot, of course, that I had been working with EMBL the, the Molecular Biology Laboratory, which has a well-established governance and managerial structure for nearly 10 years by that time. So at least I had some kind of a model to follow. Uh, I may want to say that uh, BBMRI became one of the first s free infrastructures to get, in get to the preparatory phase funding. So there was really no, no role model to, f to follow at that point. So it was a little bit of learning by doing type of experiment. Good. So uh, uh, moving to the topics of our webinar, which is planning a new research infrastructure. First of all, I would ask you uh, to tell us more about what are the main stakeholders of this uh, research infrastructure and what does it mean for you to manage these very different interests? Well, indeed, <laughs> research infrastructures have a lot of different stakeholders with very different expectations and ambitions as well. First of all, of course, it's researchers. Researchers are the ones who are to be using the infrastructure for their research purposes, for storing their um, research results and so on. Member states, ministries, governments are key players because they are the owners 
and funders. In the end, they are the funders of infrastructures. Oftentimes, funding, however, goes through the funding agencies of the uh, countries. But again, to make matters a little complicated, there is no one-size-fits-all model, because in some countries it goes one way, and in the other countries the other way around. The European Union, the European Commission, is obviously a stakeholder because they are supporting the development and build-up of infrastructures to a great extent. Also, policymakers at national level and at European level really are looking at infrastructures essentially to find the type of um, knowledge base that you need for very difficult decision making in today's world. Then, depending of course a little bit on the infrastructure industry, is obviously a very important um, player, stakeholder in this. And I would say that universities, even as institutions like public health, research institutions, hospitals can be stakeholders, and finally the society, the citizens, patients, those who contribute samples, data to um, infrastructures are obviously very much stakeholders. I would say that Patient organizations, in many cases, play a very important role when it comes to um, defending the case of infrastructures. And then finally, I think it's important to keep in mind that the very different nature of the different infrastructures also has some special user groups or stakeholder groups. Let's take meteorology, for instance. Uh, it's a group of people who want to know what the weather is going to be like tomorrow and next year and so on. Uh, so it's, it's a very large group. So moving from the, the, play, the idea and the, so, so get the ball rolling ahead. So, so looking at the planning stage, could you describe the main steps and issue to be considered in the, the stage? Infrastructures, I think one has to first think that the traditional infrastructure um, that we thought 20, 30 years ago is a very large piece of research equipment located in one place, like CERN um, in, in uh, the French-Swiss uh, border. Nowadays, we look at infrastructures much more differently. It is a various types of equipment, databases, that are being used for research purposes, which are too demanding for any single country or smaller unit, but actually require a pan-European um, activity to, to reach the type of uh, level that we could call infrastructure. This means that typically the scientific community, the, it's kind of a bottom-up process, the scientific community comes up with a, re a need. And to take the science case forward, it typically needs one or a few strong personalities to actually drive the, 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 the project uh, to its first stage. We could say leadership. L that's leadership, if you ever saw it. And, and, and we certainly know many of these individuals. At this point, it's important to emphasize that Europe came to recognize this dilemma and um, European Union, actually the Council of U Research Ministers, essentially set up an ESFRI. It's, ESFRI stands for European Strategy Forum for Research Infrastructures. They essentially decided that we need a European roadmap for research infrastructures. This means what are the type of activities which are mature enough to be developed into a, uh, infrastructure and also a process of evaluating them. And then essentially providing this roadmap as the way to establish such a thing. So it's a relatively complex pro project. It, it included an application process, an evaluation process and a feedback process which then finally evolved into uh, the first infrastructures being selected for the S3 roadmap 2006. And BBMRI, the one that we've been talking today of so much already, 
was among the first on the roadmap. European Commission had decided that any ESFRI project that gets il um, elected on the roadmap is eligible to apply for funding for preparatory phase to essentially bring the community together, agree on the business plan, the type of statutes, the type of operational uh, model that they would like to have. That was exactly what happened. And then only after this one, actually, the, was the starting stage of the infrastructure. Unfortunately, even three years of preparatory phase was not quite enough to find agreement among the member states as to what would be the, 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 the well, let's say, two major problems. What would be the governance model and what would be the funding model? Um, I think we'll get back to that a bit later. And then um, to find a suitable legal status for this one, the European Union actually came up with a new instrument, ERIC, European Research Infrastructure Consortium, which was elected also by B BBMRI. And since it was new for Brussels, it actually took another almost two years to get the decision that now it is ready to go. So I would say that the whole process for BBMRI took about 10 years. So we're not too much talking about a quick process. But on the other hand, a lot of maturation of the concept did take place during the time. And during this uh, preparatory phase, which is uh, the, the, the planning before, the, 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 what are the main challenges that you have to consider? I think it's important to keep in mind that the, the stakeholders have very different expectations from from the infrastructure. Patients contributing samples hope to get some benefit for themselves or their relatives, uh, society. Researchers want quick results. Industry wants new ideas for pharmaceuticals and, and others. So uh, there are a lot of very different expectations. And that, of course, makes it, makes it, makes it quite um, a, a mess to start with. Um, now, depending, of course, on the pre infrastructures as such, um, the preparedness of the national participants in the research infrastructures may be quite varying. Some are well advanced, whereas others are not. And the, the difficulty of getting everybody to talk the same language, and I'm talking also the physical language, we have 28 of them in Europe to start with, to harmonize activities, to standardize activities, to actually bring the type of interoperability of the, the science case um, is, is considerably challenging, I have to say. Then, um, to actually convince the national ministries to really believe that this is a, an, an important infrastructure for our scientific community is important. It might be worth mentioning that when the ESFRI roadmap had been produced, a majority of European countries had followed and made their own national research infrastructure roadmaps, trying to kind of identify those areas where they are particularly strong and where they are particularly willing to invest additional funding towards a pan-European activity. Um, now, we are still talking about science case. Now, when you start talking about governance models and funding models, this is where the ministries really start giving you a headache because scientists oftentimes can agree, but try to make the ministries agree as to how many votes your country has and how much money your country has to pay is um, is the one that really took a lot of time. I have to uh, confess that. Um, anyway, I think maybe to summarize, I, I believe that most of us would think that the science case is something where we can agree. And it's, 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 it's full of problems, but they're doable. But the, the kind of getting the ministries on board is sometimes very challenging. The European Commission has been very helpful, and of course, it's our common money too. Um, so it's a group of challenges. Unfortunately, it's not only one. 
So we could say that uh, the business case and the science case is not enough. So you need to, to, um, to put yes. more emphasis and attention and involvement of different stakeholders. In, indeed, this is the case. Um, it's not enough to have a, a good business case and the science case but to really convince the ministries that these are the type of procedures that we would like to follow and then actually to set up the entire operation, it, it, it's time consuming. So uh, could you tell us uh, an example uh, of a critical situation and how did you address uh, the challenge that you met? The, the development of the scientific case into the kind of um, administrative and governance case was uh, quite challenging. Uh, scientists had agreed more or less on the principles, but when we then had all the ministerial representatives, some with rather little information about what research infrastructures are, it, it took quite some while before uh, we could kind of find a common language and common understanding as to what the goals are. I think the end result was quite positive, but it did take at least a year longer than expected. Um, I had probably been a bit overly optimistic from my experience from EMBL where a lot of um, very experienced top-level administrators had been participating in the operation for several years. So there was kind of an, a, a, a pattern of how to proceed. Here we took a little bit of time to get there. So Moving from the planning stage to the construction stage, what are the main steps to be and issues to be considered? Well, um, as I said, the, the preparatory phase, the planning stage um, really resulted or was expected to result in a business plan and the statutes for uh, the legal entity, BBMRI ERIC, Unfortunately, it actually took an extra year before member state uh, representatives could agree on the critical principles. But this was all essentially designing things on paper. Um, of course, there was a little bit of something done, uh, like a catalogue of the European biobanks of maybe 20 million samples towards the actual operation. Um, but still, only... Um, when the legal entity was agreed upon and the process actually took almost two years also in Brussels before the, the ERIC uh, um, regulation was passed, um, BBMRI already decided that to solve the hen and egg problem, whether to first have the assembly of members thinking how to hire an administrative director and particularly the director general, that was already started before the legal entity became reality. So the mem member states that participated, they had signed a memorandum of understanding, had a process to elect both the director general and the administrative director. So they were in place when the first assembly of meeting, uh, members meeting started. Which means that um, thereafter BBMRI Eric got off to a good start. But of course you still need the building, which was more or less ready, at least some temporary facilities, and the staff. So are there any, um, considering the governance issue at this stage, are there any suggestions or issues to be considered for get the board taking decisions? Well, obviously, at least in my opinion and in my experience, the assembly of members, um, they should really focus their activities on agreeing on the strategic development, particularly of long-term development of the infrastructure and on financial issues. And give a reasonable amount of liberty to the director general and the management, management committee where actually the wisdom is. Uh, flexibility not to start micromanaging the infrastructure um, at kind of a ministerial level. Uh, that doesn't even work in the, in the big uh, infrastructures like EMBL, so why should it work with the small ones? Um, there's just a curiosity. If uh, uh, you were a scientist 
holding a managerial position. Does it, this uh, uh, help it to you in this stage or not? <laughs> well, having a managerial position for a scientist is a little bit like a suicide in the sense that you spend so much time on doing something for which you don't get publications and you don't get impact factors. You get a lot of new enemies, but um, that doesn't really help you too much. This also means that the positions like the director general are essentially like the last positions before you retire, because where do you go back? Good. So could you describe a particular challenge that you've addressed in this stage, in your experience, and what helped you? Kind of been describing all along the way, uh, there have been a number of challenges. Um, maybe really convincing the scientific community that they have to make their case more or better understood for the administrative people from the ministries who seem to have often arrived rather uh, kind of unprepared to discuss the development of the infrastructure. I think in the end we were able to come up with a system where everybody was working towards the same goal, but that took time. So could you summarize some key learning points for moving from the planning stage to the construction stage of a new research infrastructure? One of the key lessons that we learned was that once scientists have essentially agreed on what looks like a very sensible research infrastructure, when they go and take it to the ministerial representatives, they are not on the equal level. So it's a long, should I say, particip participatory process where the scientists start teaching the ministerial people and vice versa to really come up with a solution that is uh, functional for everybody. For the manager, I think this is a time when you have to very closely and carefully listen to the differences in opinion and try to come up with something that looks like a sensible solution, um, oftentimes referring to what experience you have from other places where you think they have been working reasonably well. So it's kind of learning by doing at the same time, but I think judging by the end result, it wasn't too bad. So I want to thank you for sharing your time with us and it was very interesting conversation. Thank you, Vero. Well, thank you.